Good afternoon, everyone. So is everybody enjoying the show? Is this a great show? So should this show be called Super Science or Super Computing? What's the, what is the meaning of, of this event? Is it Super Computing or Super Science? Because I think it's Super Science and Super Computing is a tool to do Super Science. So you know, at NVIDIA, we have spent a lot of time working on how do we make better tools for the scientists to do super science. So w whether you're doing you know, uh, weather simulations or molecular biology, you want the best tool you can. You don't want to have to go and create the tool for every project you do. So NVIDIA works with you know, key partners like DDN to go create that super tool. So as you embed into a typical IT organ, oops, went one too slow. Um, you know, as you do AI, all of the training that happens has many layers to it. And there is just so many com complexities of it. So from a system administration, from a procurement cycle of what are, what are the right storage? What is the right switches? What is the right compute heads? It takes a lot of time to think about what is the right system to do that, to give you the right tool. Because it's like, okay, do I need, you know, how many fabric managers, how many storage heads? All of that is a complex equation. So at NVIDIA for about the last, uh, since 2016, we have been building supercomputers. We had a DGX-1 launch, and that was tied to what we called Saturn V internally. So Saturn V has been uh, evolving. So we had Saturn V, we had Selene. Uh, most recently, we have just announced EOS. Those supercomputers inside of NVIDIA are fueling or are supporting thousands of researchers inside of NVIDIA. So as we come up with, you know, what is the best practice? How do we work with DDN? How do we do all of these things to do the best science? You know, we apply those to a product. So NVIDIA has created a turnkey solution so that, you know, we can go and have, it's, you know, at a macro level, it's one part number, one infrastructure, but there are many things underneath of it that are leveraged through our partners like DDN. So, you know, eliminating that infrastructure complexity in the guesswork and being able to be joined at the hip with NVIDIA researchers is what we are, you know, strongly encouraging in our super pod methodology so that, you know, you don't have to go and figure out, oh, how does the fabric work? Wait a minute, I want to do science. I don't want to do fabric management. You know, it is taking that, uh, keeping the AI aspects or the, um, uh, the infrastructure pieces out of the researcher's concern. So within a uh, DGX uh, superpod, it is comprised of many things. So one of our base building blocks is a uh, DGX uh, uh, H100 that has eight GPUs in it. With that, we need storage. With that, we need 400 gig network. With that, we have a whole control plane software infrastructure that we leverage, or that is kind of a control plane, uh, but then we work with all of the partners to integrate the, the, the AI workflows. Um, and to be able to get this all deployed as a, as a single unit is an important part of the problem. So from a DGX H100, it is comprised of eight GPUs, a two socket server. We have what we call an east-west fabric of InfiniBand. We have a north-south fabric for storage. And all of that is tied together and orchestrated from a workflow standpoint. Within the software infrastructure, you know, it is very important to have the IO management and uh, the storage IO pieces at, as kind of a foundational level. At the top level, you know, the researchers, they want to use things like Rapid and Tau and the toolkits to do the science. They don't want to have to worry about all of the, the tool management or the compute infrastructure. So we are trying to make it more ready for the researchers of the world. Um, 
with our control planes, we allow for things to be on-prem and off-prem is one of our uh, value props. You know, as we do training, uh, the uh, uh, Neo, uh, uh, sorry, the Megatron type models for LLMs, these get to be bigger and bigger tasks. We have, you know, customers, partners that are doing it over, you know, tens of thousands of GPUs at this point. There are lots of moving parts in, in those uh, scenarios. So these equipments, as I've heard in this booth, NVIDIA stuff is expensive. You want to get the most out of it you can. So having a tuned infrastructure and a control plane to work with it is a very valuable thing. So for an example on, on DDM, there are many cases where we need to go and reload data fairly frequently. So some of the caching appliances are a wonderful thing to help accelerate the task. Because if you do not have the right speed storage feeding it, the GPUs are sitting there waiting. You don't want the GPUs waiting. You want to keep everything moving. Um, so this is kind of one example of why uh, storage is ultra important. As you get to uh, large jobs, the compute hardware is not perfect. There will be an interrupt. You know, some people call that a failure. We like to call it an interrupt. So having the ability to go and do checkpointing so that you can go when a job interruption happens so that you can go backwards a little bit and keep moving. So if you think of you know, science, science it's been kind of okay to have failures. You know, if you don't get a simulation done, you kind of shrug and say, well, that was okay. As AI is getting applied to business, you have to have a guaranteed business outcomes. CIOs want forward progress. They want to be able to prove that they've spent X dollars on an investment and were able to move that job forward at a predictable uh, rate. So the ability to have that checkpointing and, and auto restart kind of features are a very important part of taking AI to the enterprise and making it more business centric. So, you know, again, at kind of a base level building block, you know, we have, you know, 32 GPU uh, nodes with eight GPUs each. We have L1 and L2 InfiniBand fabrics. We have UFM uh, fabric managers. We have control heads for, for managing all of those pieces. To get all of these pieces rolled into a data center in a timely fashion is part of what the DGX SuperPod is delivering on. Because you know, we have strategic relationships to make sure that all of those, e all of those pieces of equipment are available at the same time. Uh, yesterday, I believe, or very recently, we've announced EOS. So both um, NVIDIA and Microsoft have built a similar size cluster of having 10,752 GPUs. And uh, uh, Microsoft's, I believe, is number three on the supercomputing list is where they ended up. Uh, so this type of solution is, is quite important uh, for both the cloud space and the business space. So you know, uh, NVIDIA and Microsoft have very similar clusters all leveraging uh, InfiniBand and so on. So in the past, so Celine was one of our previous clusters from a couple years ago with A100. So with 512 of them, to do a, a chat GPT-3, 175 billion parameters, it would have taken 1.6 years to go and, and do that training event. When we announced uh, the, the, the H100 platform and we put one of our first clusters together about uh, six months ago, um, it would have taken four months to train that. So now with the 10,752 GPUs, we're able to do it in eight days. So in just you know a two, three year period, we have been able to go from 1.6 years down to, to three days. The amount of equipment that you have in one place that all needs to be working together and being able to tolerate up when, tolerate when an interrupt happens and then to be able to restart and move forward is one of the very important things that we 
get out of partnerships with BDM and, and storage and the ability to checkpoint. skip that. So, you know, from a uh, DJX Superpod, we have the ability to uh, have basically program manage it uh, from a delivery standpoint. So there's all the uh, site prep that happens, all of the training of the system and being able to hand it off and to get it into the data scientist's hands as rapidly as possible. So it is a proven, tested uh, infrastructure that is very similar to what we have supporting thousands of researchers within NVIDIA. Uh, from a customer win standpoint, uh, we have you know kind of a logo garden of folks that have been deploying this and this story works. Um, we have you know key partners like uh, Naver in uh, Korea that is uh, doing large language models and uh, uh, chatbots with it. We have uh, India from a HPC AI nation. India has adopted this as their infra uh, infrastructure to go do science. Uh, University of Florida is doing it at an academic level to, to go and help create new models and uh, technologies at the academic level. Uh, JD.com, an, another solution that's doing it for uh, e-commerce kind of uh, solution. So it is, it's everywhere. So I describe it as DGX SuperPod. It's a tool that works. So it, it's all about the tool and making it, helping you do the science.